Good afternoon and welcome once again to the group exhibit for hydrogen fuel cells and batteries here at the Hanover Fair 2017. Please uh, come in, sit down and enjoy complimentary beverage. My name is Michael Sinclair and I will be the moderator for your next discussion. I'd like to remind you that questions are welcome at any time. So please raise your hand and I'll bring the microphone to your table. Here to talk about new developments and advanced air blowers and controls for fuel cells, I have the CEO of Virex, uh, uh, Virex Air Systems. Uh, please join me in welcoming Mr. Ski Milburn to the stage. Thank you, Ski. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, thanks again for, uh, for joining me. Would you please start by introducing uh, Varex Systems? Sure. So, but before we do that, everybody move up. You feel like you're so far away. <laughs> <laughs> What's the problem here? Are you afraid of me? <laughs> While you're moving, I'll tell you. So, Varex Air Systems was started by me 30 years ago, um, even before the hydrogen and fuel cell group exhibit. And uh, we've been in the fuel cell business a long, long time. And uh, it's great to be here. We've been a many, many time exhibitor at the Hanover Mesa. And we build air systems. You even know anything about fuel cells, you've heard about hydrogen. You know they run on hydrogen. But what fuel cells do is they take fuel and air, and they convert it directly into electricity without combustion. And in order for that to happen, the air has to come from someplace. And so we specialize in building that machines that pump air into fuel cells. And we've, we're focused on the one to 30 kilowatt space, which is you know, house power in Asia, forklifts in the United States, range extenders in, in uh, Europe and China. Um, we like to think we're the best at it. We're one of the few companies in the world that is 100% focused on being a supplier in the fuel cell air system business. We actually make a living, if you can call it that, um, in the fuel cell business. So I'm really, really happy to be here. Thank, and thanks to all of you for listening. Great, so it sounds like you're mostly focused on mobile applications, is that fair to say? Uh, a lot of mobile, like, but is a forklift mobile? <laughs> Yes, a lot of our technology runs on rubber tires, um, but we also do stationary distributed generation. We're, we're agnostic. We don't care if it runs on wheels or it sits on the ground, and we don't care if it's solid oxide, PIM, direct methanol. I mean, we've got a little, we've got a hand in a little bit of everything. Okay? So you mentioned that you, uh, you think, yeah, and you, maybe you are, the only blower company that's operating only in the fuel cell industry. What we're, makes uh, your blowers ideal for fuel cell applications? Well, it, they almost one goes with the other. Um, most fuel cell air systems and electronic controls and humidifiers and lots of parts, including the original membranes, were adapted from other industrial applications. And so people came in the fuel cell industry, they took what they could find, they kind of went to the hardware store and, and bought the parts they could get. And uh, what we did is, the DOE came to us many years ago. We were doing some other things with exotic air compressors. And they said, we'd like you to help us build air compressors for a fuel cell car. And we started laughing. We're like, that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard in my life. It was 30 years ago, right? And uh, one thing led to another, and we realized it actually was a business. There was going to be something here. The air systems were difficult. Um, and so we actually sat down and said, we're going to learn what we think the fuel cell industry is going to need in 20 years and project that, that sort of trajectory of, of a specification. And then we're going to design for that point, which was not what the industry needed at that time. It's what we thought was coming. And then we set out to absolutely focus on building the best possible technology to meet those requirements. And you know what? We got really lucky because we were correct about <laughs> our prediction of where the industry was going. Had we gotten that one wrong, boy, we'd be in the wrong place today. And, and, uh, and we uh, was also re really fortunate to uh, along the way attract a terrific engineer, Joel Oakman, who you'll meet in my booth if you come by later, um, who did the 
absolutely impossible. He took an old German technology. We, all I told him was, I said, if you can take this old technology that's fully developed, has completely realized all its potential, and raise the pressure by two times, and simultaneously raise the efficiency by two times, we'll have a perfect product for the fuel cell industry. Uh, he did that and more, <laughs> and so here we are today. Okay. What, uh, what characteristics, I'm curious, were you uh, designing for? You mentioned you were designing for this future fuel right. cell that didn't exist on the market at the time. So what, what were those characteristics? That you uh, the, the big one was pressure. At the time, everyone was at like two bar, and we were looking particularly at stationary, and we said, we believe that stationary pressures are going to approach 1.2 bar. And, uh, and that, and that mobile was going to come down to maybe 1.6 or something. And at the time, pressures were much, much higher. And uh, unfortunately, the region blower at the time only got to 1.1 bar. So we had to double it to 1.2. Um, that judgment has been proven correct. It was a huge bet. We bet millions and millions of dollars and years and years of development on developing a technology for a specification that none of our customers wanted. Uh, but there's a famous American hockey player. I don't know how many of you here in Europe watch ice hockey, but it's a big sport even in Europe and certainly in North America. We had a famous hockey player once who says, they said, why are you so good? And he says, I never go where the puck is. I go where the puck is going to be. <laughs> so that's what we did. We just focused on it and, and, and as it turned out, we were correct. We also knew efficiency had to get better. If you double the pressure, you double the power of the compressor. Nobody wants a compressor to cost anything or consume any power at all. And so we also knew if we were going to double the pressure, we had to double the efficiency so we could essentially deliver twice the pressure for the same power. And we've also accomplished that. So, so is it just the physical blower itself that you manufacture, or what about uh, the control system? Well, the blower is driven by an electric motor. We don't make motors. We specify them and, and buy them all over the world from the best vendors we can find. But we run brushless DC motors, and every brushless DC motor requires an electronic control. And so it's a little external box. Sometimes it's bolted on the motor. Sometimes it's separate. But it controls the logic circuits that switch the power between the coils and the motor and cause the motor to spin. Uh, what we saw is that we were buying controls off the shelf once again from industrial sources, much like everything else in this business in the early days. And the controllers just weren't right. They didn't have the right voltage range. They incorporated all kinds of expensive functions that we didn't need. Um, and they were missing some things that we knew the fuel cell did require. And so we're now developing our own line of controllers that are optimized for the fuel cell industry. Uh, let me give you a quick example. A lot of our, of our customers want to run it the fuel cell starts at 80 volts when it's not making any power, say a five kilowatt fuel cell. You put it under load, it goes to 40 volts or 50, but they'd like to start with a car battery on, t on 12 volts or maybe 10. So the standard industrial controller that's available works from 20 volts to 59 volts. So it won't work at the beginning at 80, it's fine in the middle and you can't start it. <laughs> Other than that, it's, it's perfect. Um, so we designed a volt, our current first generation controller goes from 10 to 100 volts. It also incorporates a software system that will allow us to do virtual mass flow metering so you don't need a mass flow meter. You can use the, we've discovered that our blowers are more accurate mass flow pumps, if you will, than the mass flow meters that you can buy for fuel cells. So we says, well, instead of having you buy a fuel cell, we'll just have our, we'll give our customer the same function, we'll put it in software. So that's available in, in sample form now and it should be in production by next year. So. Is that a significant cost savings for fuel cell designers? Yes, yeah, so the, the controllers about the same price as the controllers that currently have less capability and it eliminates other components and so the whole system cost goes down. Okay. How, how would you describe uh, Varex's position in the market? I guess, how do people perceive your products in the market? Oh God, you have to ask my customers. but. Uh, what they tell us, what our, our customers consistently tell us, is they believe that Varix has hit that sweet spot where we're not necessarily the cheapest or the smallest or the most efficient, but we're the best combination of characteristics, you know? And we work hard for that. Um, what we do know is this, in the world outside of China, there's about 85 companies in the fuel cell business that are building fuel cells from one to 30 kilowatts, you know, my sweet spot. 
Uh, right now we have a half a dozen of those in production and about 50 are buying their blowers from us. So we kind of like our market share, we like the future. Uh, some of those of course won't survive, some will, will combine with others, but as the business grows, uh, I think that uh, we're in a good place. And so we're real, we're real happy with our accomplishments and, uh, and it's great to be here. <laughs> so. So my colleague Brian mentioned that you had an announcement. Is that is that the case? Well, I told him I would tell him what it was, but I have to kill him. And I unfortunately have to tell you the same. Is it? I can tell everyone in the room an incredible story. And as soon as this is over, I need you all to come up front so I can kill you. But but no, I will tell you this. We've been growing at about 50% per year, um, which is an, about the same rate as the fuel cell industry. Uh, last year, right after the Hanover mess up. Uh, we were we received the uh, an export award from the president uh, from the U.S. Department of Commerce. I wanted to announce it last year, but we and we knew about it, but we weren't allowed to talk about it yet. You know, so that was so. This is kind of a late announcement of that. This year, our revenue should double or triple. We're we're seeing incredible um, growth, and the big news, which I can't really give you the announcement, but the big news is. This year, the China, the government of China announced big incentives for mobile fuel cells. Uh, this is mostly in the 30 kilowatt category. It's for urban transportation. Uh, and we hope by long before we come back to the MESA next year that we will have a huge announcement about that. Uh, we were joking before the show that next year I plan to come in on screen on a, on a uh, YouTube video from Thailand or someplace. I'll be on the beach and I'll say, goodbye. <laughs> uh, so you talked about some of your product's features. You talked about how it has, um, the new controller has integrated uh, mass flow uh, measurements, um, that it has a higher voltage range. Is, what are the, um, I guess, are there other technical features with your blowers that are unique in the market? Um, well, one of the things we've been doing is the, our blower has one moving part. It's, and I went to mechanical engineering school and I'm pretty sure that one moving part is the absolute minimum, minimum number of parts that a machine that has moving parts can have. So it's about as simple as you can get. It is literally a motor with a propeller on the end. Now that propeller has millions of dollars of development and a US patent and patents pending in other countries around the world. Um, We've been doing a lot of testing at, with us and with customers, and, and uh, we recently completed a field trial in Austria with an Austrian company, and they came back after, they ran these things 24 hours a day for six years in a forklift environment. We know they're bouncing off the walls and slamming up against pallets, you know, it's like the toughest environment you can imagine. And at the end of the test, the test continues, but at the end of the first six years, they came back to us and said, it's the only component on the whole fuel cell or the whole forklift truck, not just the fuel cell, that didn't have to be replaced. The stacks had to be replaced, the humidifiers had to be replaced, the tires had to be replaced. Um, and our blowers are still going. All 12 of them are still running to this day, right? And we have a, another test in Japan uh, that's been going on for years and the goal is to get to 100,000 hours. Uh, we're, we're really proud of our durability. These are really simple, robust machines. Before we did these, we did a much more complicated machine and we knew you would never figure out all the failure modes. Well, this thing doesn't really have a failure mode. It's just so ridiculously simple. Either it works or it doesn't. <laughs> it's great. It's, uh, the simplest solution is usually the best. Yeah, exactly. Where, um, where do you manufacture your products? Um, this is crazy. We, live in, we come from Boulder, Colorado, a beautiful town at the foot of the Rocky Mountains. And, uh, I've been there, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's not exactly the low cost manufacturing center of the universe. We make all of our products at our headquarters in Boulder. We currently ship them to cu customers in 17 countries. Uh, we'll be in China, hopefully before the end of this year, we'll have 18 countries. Um, and eventually, we, one of the things we think is happening is that there's this idea called globalization, which is people chase the cheapest place in the world to make stuff. You know, once we went to Japan, then we went to Korea, then we went to uh, Thailand, and then China, and maybe next at Madagascar or something. But I also think something new is coming, which is what we call localization, and which our idea is that with globalization, the, you may build it in a cheap place, but your factory's far from your customer. And we think the most important supply chain in the whole world is the supply chain between us and our customer. And the perfect place to be is across the street, or in the same town, 
or at least in the same country. Uh, we have one customer that's offered to give us space inside their factory so that we could set up a little mini factory in their factory. And in that case, the supply chain is as close as you as me. I finish a blower, I hand it to you, and you build it into your fuel cell. Um, so that's kind of the, the future for us. But right now, we build everything in Boulder, Colorado, and we ship it all over the world. Okay. Okay. So it's very uh, encouraging to hear. I mean, we're you know, hearing about growth across the fuel cell industry, but from yeah. your perspective, it's, things are looking great. Uh, this has been a really great last couple of years for us. We've, we've finally, after it's, fuel cells, our industry has a really long sales cycle. We've had customers that typically they buy one unit, a year later they come back and they say, hey, that's pretty good, with like five, and then two years later they come back and say, wow, we're gonna start field trials. I think our, we have customers that took 10 years to get to production from when we first started. Now the good news is we've been doing this long enough that a lot of our customers who have a 10 year sales cycle have been doing it for 10 years, nine years, eight years. And so we're starting to see every year more and more of our customers go into production. And so we used to build, by, we were happy when we hit 100 units. Then we were really thrilled when we hit 1,000 units. Uh, this year we'll probably build 5,000 blowers and the way things are going, next year it could be 25,000. I mean, there's re the ramp is we're really going around the corner, right? Now that's partially customers are building more units and partially more customers are building more units, right? Are there any audience questions? Right. So when I stopped by your booth uh, before, it seemed like some of your newest products were larger blowers. Is that a trend you're observing, larger systems? Well, we always, we always wanted to get up to 30 kilowatts because we thought that was going to be a sweet spot. Um, and our current product, our current biggest products is, is a blower for a 30 kilowatt fuel cell. It's going in a number of uh, range extender buses around the world uh, and some taxis and a couple of other things of, of that nature. What we didn't know is that the Chinese were going to write an incentive program that basically says 30 kilowatts is the perfect size. Uh, that was total blind luck. I mean, I'd love to tell you guys I had a great crystal ball and I called that years ago. That was complete total blind luck. <laughs> but, you know, even a blind cat catches a rat once in a while. <laughs> Wonderful. So, uh, for more information, of course, uh, feel free to visit the uh, Varex booth. It's located at C38. Uh, if you take this aisle down, uh, it'll be a few blocks down that way. Um, so, if you could please join me in thanking Mr. Skeed Milburn for, uh, for this conversation. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Skeet. Thank you. So the next talk is uh, going to be a short delay. It'll be at 4.40, but I do encourage you to come back for that talk. The speaker will be Dr. Uh, Carrie Ann Anderson. She's very knowledgeable in the fuel cell industry. She's uh, currently with Fourth, Wave, uh, Fourth Energy Wave, and she'll be speaking uh, on an, uh, about an overview of what's ha uh, new and what's happening here at the Hanover Fair. So hopefully we'll see you back then.